Good morning, brothers and sisters. Thank you for the time that we've spent so far together this week in this week's study. As we come together again for the last study of this week, shall we come before our Heavenly Father to ask him to guide us and direct us so that we may more clearly understand that which is occurring and that which is, is being presented in the scripture of truth. Shall we now bow our heads and ask his guidance as we enter into this meeting? Gracious Father in heaven, creator of us all, we come before you because we need your wisdom. We thank you for the many blessings that you are providing. We thank you for the indications of how close this world is before it will indeed end. We ask now, Father, for your guidance. Direct us. Be with us in this study. Help us to understand these things that you would want us to understand. May our minds be ready to receive them. May your will be done. We ask, Father, that your spirit enlighten us and that your angels protect us. We need you greatly. Be with us now, each one. Help us to understand. For this, we thank you. And for this, we praise you. In Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Now, yesterday we took time to discuss several points. We went over quite a bit of what had been the events of this week. Now, I was left with quite a number of questions. One of those questions, and I offer this because we at this point in this study are not able to have either of the parties that have raised these issues address this in their voice, but we do have their words. So I need us to consider something that we have already covered. On the 1st of June of this year, Elder Jeff gave a presentation. At the end of that presentation, roughly an hour and 21 minutes into their time Colin made a statement. Now, as I have learned and I have watched, Colin is very focused at times and very unfocused at others. At this time, he gave verbally his position of where he was standing regarding Daniel 11.14. Now, I realize that this is turning the page back from where we've been in our study. If we look at what he has had to say, it may give us more light upon the position that he had been addressing and why this has caused such an issue with what Jeff has been presenting. Now, I was led yesterday to take the time to put together the transcript of what Colin had to say. Any of you can do the same because this is posted on the internet. At one hour, 21 minutes and 33 seconds, Steve Welk, after Elder Jeff had answered some questions, gave the floor to Colin and Colin began. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Thank you for your presentation. Um, um, I just, so I just want to express what I am seeing and why I am seeing it. So when I look at Daniel chapter 11, I see a twofold dealing with the papacy in the United States. Revelation 13, 14, 17, it's the same way. It's the beast and its image. What is an image? So I'm in looking at, let's say, the evidence that or that Brother Daniel brought Constantine, dealing with Constantine, and I think Maximius, so that the first Sunday law, which is going to typify the Sunday law in our, our time. So when we looked at um, uh, the Maximius to Biden, Constantine, a parallel to Trump in our time. So God declares the end from the beginning. So for me, when you when you're when I'm looking at the Sunday law, then the Sunday law. Now, you know how it comes about the model for that the 1260 and all that you know that um, first Sunday law 321. Um, so when I look at Daniel 11, 
Revelation 13, Revelation 14, Revelation 17. It's all about the Sunday law in our time, which is modeled by the past, what happened in our past. And I'm saying, when we look at Daniel 11, for example, we can see America in there, and we can have to see the dynamics of the North and the South. So all I agree with all that you said in the big picture, but focusing on the image of the beast, I'm saying that when you look at the king of the North, it's the Republicans, the king of the South, the Democrats. So even in the beginning of the chapter, you can see the Democrats and the Republicans in the end verse 40. You can see the, in my own beliefs, you can see the struggle between Biden and 2020 and what's going to come now, the king of the North, the return of the king of the North, and then the the U.S., this national Sunday law follows there, verse 41. You know how it goes to the universal Sunday law, and I'm saying those things must happen for the deadly wound to be healed. The only way that a, the papacy can come back at the end of that chapter, the only way is through the U.S. The deal, the happenings, what happens in America, the papacy cannot bring about a Sunday law it's the United States and the kings with Revelation 17. The 10 kings will give their power and strength unto the beast. So there is a progression that how it heals. So I'm saying that if you look at the beginning and the end, because that's how God teaches knowledge, we cannot leave out the United States because in the United States, the image of the beast is who brings about the Sunday law in our time. So that has been, been my argument. And I'm saying, I'm putting in a simplified way, when you look at America in sports and conquest, everything that has been the way of Rome, that you know. And so you have to see pagan Rome, papal Rome, even the dynamics between the Democrats and the Republicans. And I'm saying it is no accident when our church was denominating uh, become a denomination in 1863, midst of the Civil War, the North and the South, and it's established in America that the Republicans are the North, the Democrats are the South, and you can see the dynamics between pagan and papal Rome, even going on right now in America. In the end, the Republicans will win out. That's the papal parallels. Because I look at everything in the Bible as type and anti-type. So I'm sorry to take so much time in, 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 and I'm not trying to belabor it. I'm trying to really have a solid understanding of all this. So thank you so much. So roughly for three and a, or for four and a half minutes, Colin spoke this. There were no questions at that point. However, Elder Jeff did interject because Colin did raise multiple points. The gist of this matter, if I'm understanding it, is that Elder Jeff is placing the situation with the robbers of thy people and with the battle between the king of the north and the king of the south as having occurred in our time in 1989 with the fall of the Soviet Union, where the United States joined hands with the papacy in order to bring down the Soviet Union. Which is correct. Colin seems to be placing this in the future. Well, we, we also make this application. So, so part of the problem that they're having here in their communication, one is Colin's not very good at communicating. Um, so we know that we can zoom into a way mark on the line. And, and so this is what we've understood, that we can make an application by zooming into a wave mark, and then we can have another line. So, so Colin himself doesn't quite understand this, and Jeff definitely doesn't understand it. So they're really talking about two different things. I mean, I, I'm pretty sure that Colin's not going to reject the idea that, you know, 1989 is with the history preceding that, is Rome exalting itself to establish the vision. He's not going to disagree with that. 
So they don't really have a disagreement. They just don't have a lot of clarity between them. Well, the other the other point, as we would, as we would look at Daniel eleven fourteen, as we have been and had looked at this here in the last couple of weeks, we have this that in those times there shall many stand up against the king of the south. Also, the robbers of thy people shall exalt themselves to establish the calzone, the vision, but they shall fall. How does the way Colin is attempting to present this establish the vision? I don't know if that's what Colin's trying to say, though. Well, I mean, he just all, all he's trying to say is that when the Sunday law comes in, it's the United States. That that's his his point, and that what we see happening in uh, the United States with the Democrats and Republican Republicans also has uh, an aspect of the King of the North and the King of the South. But we know, you know, the King of the North, you know, is Syria. The King of the South is Egypt in the historical application. Rome after the Battle of Raphia is going to exalt itself to establish the vision, right? Then they're going to, um, you know, become the king of the north. They're going to conquer Syria. And so, you know, after Syria conquers Egypt, right? So the Battle of Paneum. So so there's different levels in which we could look at this, right? I mean, we can, we can take the Battle of Raphia as 1798 and the Battle of Paneum is 1989, something Jeff never does, but clearly... Right. That's correct. And I don't know why we never noticed it before, because we sort of did it the other way. We said, well, you know, these typify this, but we know that it's going to be in that period between 1798 and 1989 that Rome is going to exalt itself to establish the vision in our time. Right. So that's going to happen before 1989. So, yeah, I, I think the problem that they're having is just they're not communicating. If they had taken the time to understand each other and to follow the counsel given in the spirit of prophecy, then they could come to understand the truth if they approached it correctly. But this sort of, I mean, this happens with people all the time. You know, you're talking with somebody and there's some little point that you have that you understand and you you, you try to explain it to them. And then they just think you're completely in error. Or, you know, vice versa, we do that to people, too. I'm not saying, you know, that we're always on the right side of things. And we get so focused upon this little point that that can't be understood if we we haven't seen everything. We haven't looked at everything. And so this is the problem that, you know, both the American and the Canadian groups have had in their approach to what they see as error. Somebody says something that they don't agree with. So obviously that person's teaching heresy. And, and this is very similar to the Adventist church. This is basically something we inherited from Adventism, this fear over hearing something that's heresy. And, and the reality is we need to separate the precious from the vile. We need to take the time to follow those counsels, to study and to understand, I mean, what Collins presented is not very clear, but but he has difficulty, you know, presenting things clearly uh, with words. So, you know, it's kind of understandable to some degree that Jeff doesn't quite get what he's talking about. But Jeff isn't taking the time to understand what Collins talking about. I mean, I don't know how much time Jeff ever spent listening to what Colin believes about things. Because right, in these studies, you know, it's mostly Jeff talking. Well, the the point that I'm looking at here from this comment on the 1st of June, mm-hmm. Elder Jeff took several weeks and then had a very lengthy, as he states, telephone conversation with Colin on this particular presentation this this comment that colin had made right so we so we don't know exactly how that phone conversation went 
but my my perspective is probably did, they just didn't really connect and understand one another. Well, on the the last presentation in June, Elder Jeff began this stating that he had great respect for Colin, that they had had this lengthy conversation, and that from the conversation and its outcome, that Elder Jeff stood where he believed he was right. Colin was maintaining his point and that they did not find that they could, you know, be in total disagreement, but they weren't in total agreement either. Now that's, mm -hmm. that's what I've taken from listening to the comments that Elder Jeff made. Yeah. Now the problem that he came, came to that led to his announcement here in the first part of July was that because right now that there's an issue with the African brothers that are going to be having this camp meeting this weekend. And the camp meeting schedule has been changed to address the King of the North, the King of the South and the robbers of thy people from what it was originally going to be has bothered elder Jeff enough that he believed that he could have no further interaction with the Canadian group. Yeah, so um, now uh, McDonald's man that was here yesterday, now, today we got uh, Samuel. Right. Samuel, can, you, can you give us any insight into what Jeff, Elder Jeff, was talking about in regard to Africa? Do you know anything about what's going on there? I don't know if you have the ability to answer that question right now. So, because at least from... Uh, what we had yesterday was the idea that, well, well, I would say that Jeff doesn't really understand what's going on in Africa. He doesn't really understand the situation. So, I mean, I'm not sure when they're talking about the robbers of thy people, is it just because of what happened with what uh, Colin said? Is it, or does it have to do with somewhat with our studies? Right. So I don't, you know, I, I don't know with Elder Jeff if he's even aware of some of what, what we've been studying, but <clears throat> well, I'm pretty sure he's not aware of what we've been studying. He's not following it, that's for sure. Right. But, you know, but I'm saying in Africa, I mean, their response could be basically our studies, not so much what Jeff is doing, because that's something that we spent a lot of time on. And that may be right. something that people in Africa are discussing because I have, you know, in WhatsApp, I have people from Africa asking me questions about these types of things all the time, trying to understand it. Right. So I'm not sure, you know, whose camp meeting this is, who's presenting it. Um, you know, whether they're people who are just following what Jeff is doing or whether they're people are following, you know, what we're doing as well, you know, so. I, I just don't believe that Jeff really knows what's going on. And, 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 and I would say that it would be actually what he's doing would be counterproductive to his stated ends um, by creating this division. Um, it's, it's not going to help the situation in Africa as we, we talked about yesterday. Well, <clears throat> the, the questions that came up, that he did answer um, before Colin's statement were showing that there is some some difficulty with from others in understanding these subjects. And here again, do not take my word for this. Investigate this for yourselves. But there were some real issues where people were trying to make applications that the scripture just is not supporting. Now, as I, as I was led to look at this for myself, I went because one of the, one of the comments that Jeff had made was that this was something that, that he first came to understand 
when he went to this meeting between conference employees and self-supporting ministries to present on this on the last six verses of Daniel mm -hmm. 11. And his comment at that point, at least, was that he had found some of Miller's writings, had read them to understand where Father Miller stood, and used that as his basis for his presentation. Now, Miller's Lecture 6, from Evidence from Scripture and the History of the Second Coming of Christ, that was published by Joshua B. Himes in 1842, gave this. Now, I, I inserted paragraph breaks here. So this is a bit different from what I found on the Internet. Need I then tell my hearers that history tells us that Alexander conquered the then known world in about six years and that he died 323 B.C. at Babylon, that his kingdom was divided <clears throat> among his greatest generals, from which division arose four great kingdoms, Egypt in the south, Persia in the east, Syria in the north, and Macedonia in the west, which kingdoms lasted until conquered by the Romans. Between Interesting that he has a different um, division than Smith gave us, remember? Yes. Yeah, that Smith put uh, Syria in the east. Right. Yeah, which which didn't really make any sense. But anyway, sorry about that. Not a problem. <clears throat> Welcome, Brother McDonald. Good to see you today. Thank you so much. Between the years 190 and 30 BC, nearly all these kingdoms became Roman provinces. Now note here, thanks to the work that, that Brother Stephen had done, we can accurately place this as being from 191 when Rome conquers Syria or conquers Greece at Thermopylae. From Daniel 11, 5, 13 inclusive, we have a prophecy of the two principal kingdoms of these four, Egypt and Syria. And anyone who may have the curiosity to see the exact agreement between the prophecy and history can read Rollins' Ancient History, where he has not only given us the history, but applied this prophecy. And as I see no reason to disagree from him in his application of these texts, I shall therefore, for brevity's sake, pass over these texts and examine the text, Daniel 11.14. And in those times there shall many stand up against the king of the south. Also the robbers of thy people shall exalt themselves to establish the vision, but they shall fall. The king of the south in this verse without any doubt means the king of Egypt. But what the robbers of thy people means remains yet a doubt perhaps to some. That it cannot be Antiochus or any king of Syria is plain. For the angel had been talking about that nation for a number of verses previous and now says also the robbers of thy people and continues evidently implying some other nation i will admit that antiochus did perhaps rob the jews but how could this establish the vision performing any act of that kind for he belonged to what is called the grecian kingdom in the vision now in the manner in which Jeff and Colin have approached this so far, how does the United States establish the vision? How does either the Republicans or the Democrats establish the calzone? Yeah. Now, the thing that I didn't get from Colin's thing is that he was saying that the United States establishes the vision. Did I miss that? I think you did. Okay. So, because... I just think Colin wasn't really communicating well. All he's saying is that, from what I gather, is that there's a parallel. Because um, okay. I don't think he was saying that in the bigger line of our history that it's the United States that exalts itself to establish the vision. I didn't gather that from it because I think he, he would accept that idea that the papacy comes in prior to 1989 to establish the vision. But he's talking specifically about the Sunday law, that the United States is going to be the one that brings in the Sunday law. That's all I gathered from what he was saying. I know it was kind of garbled, but 
so he was just saying that there's a parallel there that we have modern Rome, you know, with the United States as as being a parallel to Rome in that context. But uh, you know, so I, I didn't see him as disagreeing with Jeff. I think he was just trying to to get Jeff to see something else regarding the Republicans and the Democrats. Well, here again, <clears throat> we do not have a transcript of their telephone conversation. No. That occurred after this. What we do have is the words that are on the record. We do have Elder Jeff's statement of his great concern because of this camp meeting that is to be held this week, this weekend, in Africa, that he is bothered by the position that Colin has presented and the seeming disagreement between what Colin has presented and what, what Jeff has presented. Yeah, but, uh, okay, um, McDonald, because um, I asked Samuel, but it doesn't seem like he can talk right now. Um, do you know much about the camp meeting in Africa and who's involved and what the issue is there? If you can talk. With the camp meeting, I think uh, Samuel can have uh, an idea because me, I'm, I'm based like in Zambia and Samuel is... Uh, is it uh, East, Af- East Africa? I don't know where. Someone who come in. I don't know where he is, but <clears throat> uh, the way that I've seen, like, even the groups, a lot of people are based uh, uh, East Africa somewhere there. Uh, that's Uganda, Kenya, somewhere there. I think Samuel yeah. can, can come in, but I'm not aware of that. Come. Okay. Now, do you know what the, the controversy, like when Jeff is talking about this controversy about... Uh, Rome ex- exalting itself to establish the vision. Do you think that Jeff understands correctly what the issue is in Africa or not? Or maybe you don't know. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm not aware with uh, the controversy there. The only uh, thing that I brought up yesterday, I think I got it. I said, uh, like a lot of people have got, um, I've not a full understanding of uh, who established the vision when it comes to our time on our line yeah i don't that's think that that's an issue it. for them right they're not even they're not even thinking about that they're more no, focused yeah on yeah, the yeah. Core, right mm-hmm. yes yeah because that's the questions i get from people all the time i don't think they even are are really understanding uh, i mean definitely i don't think they're thinking about what colin has said Yes, I think the best thing is uh, for Colin to come out so that uh, he explains fully how he was explaining it. Yeah, well, I don't think Colin yeah. explained it very well. Because, see, Colin's not really focused upon the, all this past stuff. He's focused upon what's happening right now in the United States. So so he's making an uh-huh. application of it. That's, that's the way that I see what Colin's doing. Jeff isn't really understanding that. But but I don't think Jeff really understands what's happening in Africa. I mean, I don't know how much he's talking to people in Africa or who he's talking to. But I mean, I'm on all yes, these yes. chats. And because here, know, here, like here in Zambia, yeah, here in Zambia, I can I can tell you, like uh, communication with uh, Jeff here. I don't think like anyone is uh, communicating with him here okay. because I know a lot of guys who are who we were with like. And I know where they've gone, and I know that some of them who are with with us. But I don't think like uh, he has uh, people here. Maybe and uh, Zimbabwe because of um, Tavo, a lot of people have gone that side and uh, South Africa. I think it's mm-hmm. East Africa. That's that's how I just see it. Or, or Sudan. Yeah, yeah. It, it's. Um, I mean. You know, I wrote it on the Unity chat. Like, Jeff makes a big deal about there's 137 countries reading his papers, which doesn't really mean too much. I mean, I have 197 countries reading my papers. You know, people people go on the Internet, they click on papers, uh, how much they're actually studying them. You know, especially when Jeff has so many articles, you're naturally going to get lots of people. So... I, I don't think that there is some big movement of people studying Jeff's material. 
uh, reading it, downloading it, and understanding it, and and using that as you know their means for their discussion. So I kind of think Jeff's a bit out of touch with what's actually happening because he's been gone for four years basically, and well three years before he came back, but it's been four years now since 2020, and. I think really the only people really interested in what he's doing is, you know, the Canadian and American groups. Um, some of the people who were in the movement came back, you know, sort of to see what was going to happen. You know, the ones who didn't like the time setting stuff. But um, like, I don't think there's any disagreement as, as far as Rome establishing the vision historically. Definitely Collins agrees with that. And, and, and so him and, Jeff and Colin are in agreement on that. All it has to do is with an application that's it's kind of obscure. I mean, not many people are following Colin. So I don't think that, that that would be a good reason to separate the Canadian and American group. I think there's other reasons that they could they have major differences on. Uh, one is symbolic use of numbers and time setting. Um, but that wasn't the reason that he gave. He gave it but something that I think is is way too obscure. So, and I'm just wondering whether you know what's happening in Africa is more an effect of what we're studying than what you know the American group is studying. I, I'm not sure how many people in Africa follow you know Jeff or the American group or the Canadian group. So yeah, I think I just, uh, uh, yeah, I think. Uh, uh, Samuel is here today, and uh, I think he can uh, lighten us on uh, how he sees things from from where he's based. Because here, uh, me, I'm very far. I, I think when you when you look on the map, you can tell me I'm 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 down there. So yeah. um, I think there, yeah, because there there are a lot of guys, as I said yesterday, even the groups. I've seen a lot of guys from East Africa. They're doing studies a lot. As compared to, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I know Samuel hasn't responded when I asked him to, so he might not be able to talk right now. He might just be listening. Okay. okay. If he can get back to me at some point, Samuel, if you can get back to me about it so that I can understand a little bit better what's happening in Africa. Okay, well, thanks, Donald. That's helpful. Sorry. Like, I never you well. I was a bit, I was kind of busy. We can appreciate that you you were busy. I mean, all of us have been busy on a lot of different things. So Miller, in his statement, saying, I will admit that Antiochus did perhaps rob the Jews, but how could this establish the vision, performing any act of that kind, for he belonged to what is called the Grecian kingdom of the in the vision. So here again, Miller would not have the understanding of the calzone. He did come to an understanding on and in regard to the daily and the abomination which maketh desolate. And once he came to understand that, we have been applying that the vision or the calzone has from a, from a very prophetic sense been able to certify for our use the seven times the 2520 yeah and the fact that when you take the hebrew number for the sons of the robbers right you, that's what it is one one two one plus i can't remember the numbers but they add up to uh seven five six one or is it the other way seven six five one seven six five one um which is that word shiva in leviticus 26 so, so we have this um, numerical connection with the sons of the robbers uh, that ties us to the twenty-five twenty to the seven times. Yeah. So Miller doesn't quite understand that the kazone is the the seven times specifically. Right. Right. Now he continued again to establish the vision must mean to make sure to complete or fulfill the same. 
And if it cannot be shown that the Grecian kingdom was to rob the people of God, I think it must mean some other nation which would do these acts to which every word will apply. And to this, we need not be at a loss. For at this very time of which the angel is speaking, Rome, the least kingdom in Daniel's vision, did exalt itself. And this kingdom did have the very marks in the vision and in the events following. This kingdom was to have great iron teeth. It was to break in pieces and to stamp the residue with the feet of it. Yeah, now, so, so the thing that, that Miller misses out is he doesn't look at the sons of the robbers of that people. Right? Correct. So, so we know, just to kind of review this again, that in uh, that it's Leviticus 26 uh, that we see Babylon is going to bring the Jews into captivity. Right. Um, and so the robbers of thy people is not Rome. The robbers of thy people is Babylon. The sons of the robbers of thy people is Rome. Right. right. So so it's, it's something that we tended to miss um, because the captivity that began with the Kazone uh, began with Babylon. You need Rome to exalt it themselves to establish the vision. Right. Right. So so it's something that, that we really have missed, at least I know I did, until we, you know, whatever it was a few weeks back, uh, when we started looking at this in detail. So now, I, and I don't know if Jeff understands that, because we just always uh, take the robbers of thy people. You know, that must be must be Rome. Uh, well, it's Rome. Anyway, go on. Okay. Now, part of the, the other situation is, as we had looked over the last few weeks, we had we'd gone into Eugene Pruitt's study on different portions of Daniel. Um, we had addressed Roy Allen Anderson's book, Understanding Daniel and Revelation. And I had taken the time to pick up Mark Finley's book, Understanding Daniel and Revelation. Now, I've been intrigued with the fact that here again, Mark Finley being someone that is highly regarded as an evangelist, would choose rather than to use the King James in his, in his tome, he chooses to use the NIV. And the NIV is fairly in agreement with Douay Reims, the Catholic Bible. So the NIV reads this as, in those times, many will rise against the king of the south. Those who are violent among your own people will rebel in fulfillment of the vision, but without success. And the Douay Reims and in those times, many shall rise up against the king of the south, and the children of prevaricators of thy people shall lift up themselves to fulfill the vision, and they shall fall. Is it any wonder that there is such a divergence of opinion within the corporate church as to how this passage is being approached. Well, um, one is, it's hard to know why they're translating these things this way. Now, I don't know if these are really in, in agree agreement. Those who are violent among your own people is quite a bit different than um, the children of prevaricators of thy people. I mean, it's, you know, one is internally within uh the Jews, the other is, you know, external. Yeah, I don't, it, I mean, the NIV is terrible. Douay Reims is a little better. Well, <clears throat> it's in these situations, the, the issue that we have is we would have a problem being able to establish any kind of a 
solid doctrine in using the NIV. Well, I, I think the whole idea of the NIV is to make the Bible unintelligible. Right. I mean, that, that's very, very clear. It's, it, it, I'm going to use the word elevates, uh, but maybe I should use the word lowers the language uh, to be much more uh, scholarly and less uh, intelligible than the King James. King James is much simpler English. Um, but it also just makes as the most difficult possible readings of everything that it can. Um, so not sure why people think it's it, because it's in modern English, it's easier to understand. It's definitely not. Now, <clears throat> as we look at this, the the point that I have been that I am taking away from what Father Miller had presented, but then also going back over some of what we talked about here with what Colin has been presenting. Mm -hmm. We may have Colin trying to zoom in further into a line, but our main point has been that, that Rome establishes the calzone so that we would understand the the vision that's being addressed here, but how that vision has been developing throughout Daniel 2, Daniel 7, Daniel 8, Daniel 10, and here in Daniel 11. Now, yeah, now he, it's interesting that, that that clip there, you have the time stamp of 126. Uh, Correct. Now, 26 minutes and one second. So, yeah, it, it it was intriguing for me to look at this whole thing over because I I took all of this strictly from the presentation as it is on the internet. Yeah. So all of the timestamps are according to what it is. This is recorded with. The fact that, that Colin spoke for roughly four minutes and 30 seconds, here is, you know, what he said and the manner in which he said, and I think it's a, a fairly accurate transcript. I am confused by how he is attempting to place the United States because our understanding, especially from the portions of Revelation that he refers to, is that this would be, the United States would be as the, the false prophet. Yeah. I still don't see that he's saying that Rome exalts itself to establish the vision. Where did you pick that up in what he said? Okay. I don't know. He didn't say it, Rome. But he said that. He said that the United States is. Yeah, well, yeah, but I don't. Okay, that's what I mean. But yeah, I don't see him talking about it at all. Is what I'm trying to say. Whether yeah, it's I think, the United yeah. States, I don't, I don't see it there. I I think he the transcript didn't include it, but I think he was talking about the United States establishing the vision. Okay. Well, uh, yeah. Just where is you it? Know, in, in this, I agree with William because that's the way I took this as being from going through and listening to this presentation a couple of times and putting the transcript together. Okay. Well, at 2.52, we got Jeff talking about uh, whether the United States or the papacy is establishing the vision. So he's going to be talking about it. Jeff is. So Jeff is going to be addressing this. Now, was this, was this was also in the presentation on the 1st of June? Yeah, yeah, I'm looking at the 1st of June. Okay, because so, so Jeff is focusing upon so that you can't understand the United States is establishing the vision, right? That's going to be forty-eight thirty-four. He's going to say that he's going to be clear that uh, the breakers of thy people, uh, this power that establishes the vision but falls itself is a new power. It right? can't be Antiochus Epiphanes. Okay, so so I see Jeff talking about it now. He, now, Colin's going to start talking at like one, 
what is it, one, what, 117 or something. Um, so Jeff is talking about it. So Jeff keeps talking about it. Okay, so Jeff says it doesn't work. He, he's, um, but I don't see Colin anywhere saying uh, that the United States established, exalts itself to establish the division. I don't see it in what you put here. I don't see it here on, on the video. It doesn't appear to me that that's what Colin's saying. The closest we get to that is where Colin says, you know, the civil war of the North and South, and it's established in America that the Republicans are the North and the Democrats are the South. But that has nothing to do with establishing the vision. That word established isn't um, in that context. Well, at the outset, when Colin was saying, so I just want to express what I am seeing and why I am seeing it. So when I look at Daniel chapter 11, I see a two, and I had to put this word in parentheses yeah. because it's, it's not very really clear, but I assumed he meant a twofold dealing with the papacy and the United States. And then his application of Revelation 13, 14, and 17. Yeah, so he's addressing here the Sunday law. He doesn't seem to be addressing Daniel 11, verse 14. I think I think he's trying to explain what he had been saying at other times. Now, now in June, so this is June 1st, so Jeff is starting this study with um, a belief that Colin is teaching that the United States it exalts itself to establish the vision. So when would Jeff have got that? idea about what Jeff, what, what uh, Colin was teaching. is Was it in an earlier video? It's very possible, yes. Yeah. Or is it something that Jeff was told that Colin was teaching? We don't know. No, I, I would say that it could be in an earlier video. Now, I've, I've gone over a few of the videos from the month of May. Yeah, okay. But but I don't see that that, I, to me, what I see is Colin trying to explain himself. I think it was uh, two weeks ago. No, but this is June 1st, right? So this is this is well over a month ago. So Jeff is doing a study to show that the United States can't be the one that exalts itself to establish the vision. So if that's the case, if Jeff is is addressing that issue, he must have an idea that, that Colin was teaching that. And then I look at Colin's explanation here. You know, it's kind of jumbled up. It's not really a coherent uh, argument or anything. But I don't think he's saying anything about the United States exalting itself to establish the vision. He's just saying that there is a parallel at the end times regarding the Sunday law. And that it's the Sunday law that you know, that we that we are focused on with the north and the south. But it's nothing about Rome, you know, exalting itself to establish the vision that we, we are going to put the United States in there. It's just that the United States is the power that's going to bring in the Sunday law, which we would all agree, because that's plainly stated in the spirit of prophecy. If, you, if you're trying to make an, a, a, a parallel, I mean, personally, I... <laughs> I think what happens prior to 1989 is our primary uh, application in this time of Rome exalting itself to establish the vision. But but Collins more zoomed in to the Sunday law itself, not to 1989. But you know I can understand why Jeff is confused. So, but but I, I just don't think Collins saying what Jeff thinks he's saying. Okay, yeah, William. Kelly wants Theodore. you to say. Yeah. Brother Theodore. Go on, William. William, are you going to talk or not? Oh, yeah. I was just going to say that I've heard Colin say it himself, that, that the United States does is, is establish the vision. Yeah, in relation to the Sunday law. Right, but he doesn't say it. Yeah, no, but that's what he's saying, right? Because I understand what Colin would be saying. So he's not disagreeing that with with that 
He's not saying that Rome doesn't exalt itself to establish the vision prior to 1989. No, this reason confusing to me, Colin Theodore, because neither one, I, I mean, if Colin, Collins had always said that Rome establishes a vision. And right. What, I mean, so, so that's what I'm trying to say, is I understand Colin. Right? I understand what he's saying, even, even without hearing him say it. Well, I can read this. So all Colin is trying to say is that when it comes to the Sunday law, when we, now, he, he if he had understood the lines better, he could have explained it better. He could have said, when we zoom in to this history, because we know it's a line, it's a parallel, right? We can look at any way mark, we can zoom in, we can see a reform line. And so there is a sense in which the United States plays that role, the same role that the papacy played, because it's going to create an image to the beast, right? So it's going to act the same way in which the papacy acted in the past, right? So if Colin could have explained himself clearly, Jeff wouldn't have had a disagreement with him, or at least he shouldn't have. But no way is Colin saying, you know, that Rome doesn't exalt itself to establish the vision. He's agreeing with it both in the historical time and also in our time, right? That's what I get from what he's saying here. He's trying to clarify himself, but I don't think him and Jeff communicate well with each other, right? There's sometimes people you just have a hard time communicating with. One is Colin is not very clear in his communications. I have a hard time understanding him sometimes too. It took a lot of spending a lot of time with him because he doesn't talk in sentences and paragraphs. He sort of mumbles his way through things. Uh, well, Collins is just, just trying to bring it to present truth. That's what Collins trying to do. He's trying to bring it to our future. And right. He's zooming in. He's, he's zoomed in, right? Yep. That's right. Yeah. And Jeff doesn't understand that. I don't see what the, I don't see what, what, why they having this problem anyway. But that, that's, what, that's, that's what I'm saying is I don't see why th that they would make this huge issue of it. Well, they've, they've had a long conversation on the telephone. I, I would have thought that that would have been enough to for Jeff to understand Colin's position. I don't know, but it looks like not. Well, well Jeff, Jeff is missing pieces of information, right? Because he's been gone for a while. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's, he, he's not aware of... Uh, understanding of how we do study these things and calling call ourselves as well mm -hmm. like you say zooming in yeah if you if you if you're away for you know three years or even you know four years whatever you want to call it three and a half years really um mm -hmm. then it, it becomes like you you just don't understand the context of what's been discussed and and jeff is listening being away for so long and then it really behooves you to be the listener more than the talker. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because if he had spent time to sort of figure out where people are coming from. Now, now, I don't think Colin's the best communicator. I'm not trying to criticize him. I'm just saying when it comes to his his way of putting together ideas, they're, they're very disjointed sentences. And, uh, you know, it's it's. It's a very disjointed conversationalist way of speaking. Yeah, it does seem seem like he puts bits and pieces together. It's it's uh, it seems to take a little bit longer for him to explain something. Yeah. Now, and also, if you know they're having a conversation on the phone and they're not clicking, um, it, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter how long you spend on the phone because we've all had those experiences of somebody that isn't understanding what we're saying. And they're not really listening. Yeah. That it, yeah. it doesn't get very far. And I kind of think that's what the phone call probably created more division. Um, in that mm. sense, because uh, I've had yeah, that. Had good, call, Colin and Colin and Jeff have been pretty tight. You know, they've they've in the past at the camp meetings. It's, it's, I often see them sitting and having discussions one-on-one -on -one in person and, mm -hmm. and so for 
it's got to be difficult for for both of them to to have this problem going on because I'm yeah it's got to be difficult because I know they're they've been really close at the camp meetings. Well, well, I I remember them having a discussion on January fourteenth, uh, two thousand seventeen, at the Glen Park Hall, you know, the log cabin there. You were there, right, Kelly? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, I was, and I have photos of them sitting together, talking. Yeah. You know, I I was but a photographer, did. recorder. <laughs> I was there. They did not communicate. Yeah. Well, I don't know if they communicated it or not, but they were sitting on a bench. Well, they were talking. Talking. They were talking, but I but Jeff didn't understand Colin's points. Okay. Right. That's all I'm trying to say. Sure. Like, I, I, don't I don't think know. that they. Just because they spent time talking is mostly Colin trying to get Jeff to listen to what he had to say. Jeff wasn't really listening, right? He wasn't really trying to understand Colin's point. And my Colin point understand. to that, and my point to that is, I'll go back to say it again, is that like after being away for so long, it 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 it, it behooves Jeff to do more listening than talking, and he's. He's just showed up after three years, and I don't know. It's a little bit delusional to me to think that you're Elijah and you're the one man that's going to save the world with your message. It's to to bring together the hundred and forty four thousand that God has God has given you this message. What are you doing here? Get down and write the articles and to have them flow out, but they don't really flow anyway when. When I read Jeff's articles, I I find it harder to follow him than than Colin right now. Yeah, I just I have question after question as I, as I read his articles I, that I just can't go on. It's like okay, I got to answer these questions first. There's no point in going on. So and I tried again, and it just doesn't doesn't work for me. So I I don't know. Jeff, she, Jeff needs to learn to listen too. Yeah, well, and, and it's we 160 do. days after July 18th that Jeff first interacts with with anybody, like publicly, right? He joins the study right. and, and renounces, you know, the symbolic use of numbers. You know, ironically, 1260 right. days after July 18th. Um, now, he had started writing uh, articles, you know, six months before or whatever, right, at the end of July. So does he yeah. reject everything after 2012? Well, that's that's what he said, though. He's still picking and choosing different things. Right. I mean, I mean, it's yeah. hard to say yeah. everything after 2012 was error, but we're still going to accept July 18th as um, the first disappointment. Right. It it, it, yeah. it doesn't really sort of make any sense, and and if it's the first disappointment, well then, um, you know, we look at Miller's Miller's first disappointment is you know April nineteenth. Um, that's Miller himself. Obviously, the July eighteenth isn't really Jeff. You know, if he's parallel to Miller, it's it's a message that's connected to Samuel Snow in Millerite history. So I, I don't really, you know, November 9th, you can connect to the first disappointment, July 18th to the second, the great disappointment. But you can't, you, there's just so many uh, things that don't really fit together. Um, but anyway, I, I just think that it, it's, it's the inability to take the time to understand another person. And it doesn't help the movement. You know, if I'm, if I'm going to shut people down and just, promote my ideas and not have the discussions that we have. Now, I guess I, I talk a lot too, but I do listen, right? I do read and I do interact with people and I do learn from other people. But right now I don't think Jeff's in that position to do that. He just wants to get his ideas out and anything that sort of seems not to fit, he's just going to push aside. He, he probably feels a little under time pressure as well. In mm -hmm. his in his mind, especially because you know the election is coming up here in the U.S. and he probably wants to put some things in place. And yeah, so 
But, but the no, thing is, but he, that's he, no no reason not to at least listen to further ideas. Yeah, and but you know he's written a lot, lot of articles, and they're not really very concise. Like he's, it's not really clear what it is he's saying. Yeah, he's, I'm sure an editor. I'm sure a good editor could condense what he's saying into a mm-hmm. lot less words. Yeah, well, yeah, but also there's just an inconsistency in what he's saying as well. So well, I can I can confess this that before July 18th, I could read his articles and understand. Mm-hmm. I get to read his articles after July 18th. I it, it's very confusing. Yeah. So, and I ain't too proud of a person to start with. So. Yeah, it's, he's definitely not the same communicator that he was in the past. Actually, William, I actually, William, I think you can give yourself a little more credit than that. God blesses you. You bring out some things sometimes that are good. I agree with Kelly on that point. So, William, at, at this point, just understand that your contributions are greatly appreciated. I have read quite a few of the articles that Elder Jeff has recently presented. I agree. They are not the, the thought process before July 18th of 2020 was very easy to track. The thought process after July 18th has been very difficult to follow. The situation that we have here, the questions that that I'm having to ask, I agree, Colin is not, he does not always communicate his thoughts in a lineal manner. He jumps around quite a bit. This seemed to be the issue. This comment seemed to be a great issue with Jeff, especially the way in which he chose to respond. I did not put Jeff's response in here because the focus needed to be Where is Colin going in his thought? Now, from what we have addressed and the way in which the defense for Colin is being presented, I can accept that some of what he is presenting is not presented clearly. I've had the experience of having to explain what someone else has been saying when they have not been understood at this point just as 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 i was saying at the beginning of the meeting we do not have the privilege of having either colin or jeff joining with us in this study however we do have the words that have been presented that we can examine. Now, I have heartburn over Biden being drawn as one historical figure and Trump being drawn as another. Right now, our focus, as we're going through the balance of this in the book of Daniel, has been that Rome establishes the vision, not the army of Rome, not a replacement of Rome, but Rome itself. Mm -hmm. So when I went through this, trying to understand why Jeff was having such a difficult time, and then listening to how he was presenting initially, that Rome joining hands with the United States to bring down the Soviet Union, would be how he would approach this could be something that made sense. And to a lot of us within this movement, it made sense because it did work. Now, I find it interesting that Jeff would have the problem 
of the brothers in Africa studying this in their camp meeting because isn't coming together to study out the situations that are being presented, isn't this what we are told we're supposed to be doing? Yeah, the thing is, I, I, I mean, we, I'll find out more from Samuel but about it when he watches the video from yesterday and he gets back to us. But the understanding that, that they're dealing with in Africa, from what I've seen in the conversations, has nothing to do with what Colin's talking about. I, I don't think that they're even thinking about that at all. They're, they're still more focused upon the historical application, not even, not even what Jeff is talking about in context of prior to 1989. You know, so the, the one discussion that I'm in in WhatsApp you know, they've, they've been going through Daniel chapter 11. Now, I haven't been following it 100% uh, closely, but I don't see anything about, like, anything that Colin's talking about, or even what Jeff is talking about. So, so yeah, it's, it, it, to me, it's kind of a bit of a puzzle why, why he's concerned about what's happening in Africa when I don't think that they're, they're concerned about what's happening here. So I'm just going back on this study here. But yeah, they don't appear to be talking about any of this. This is Samuel's study that, that he has. Okay. So as I was led to go over this, it led me to, to question and try to examine this a little more in depth. I would hope that this has been a benefit for all those that are involved in this study today, I'm I am very bothered by the announcement that had come from Elder Jeff about about this situation. Now, as we have as we have spoken in the past about the patterns, we know that by 1846. 47 and 48 that William Miller had withdrawn from his speaking, but by 1849, he had been considering speaking again at other meetings, and then he was laid to rest. Now, our situation and our admonition is that we are to study these things out for ourselves. We cannot rely on any other person, not a Jeff, not a William Miller, not anyone regarding our salvation. We are to study to show ourselves approved unto God is the admonition given us. Yet we also have an obligation to look at what other brothers and sisters are presenting to determine is this something that we find in line with scripture i know that coming up in this area this weekend there's going to be a presentation from a brother that believes that melchizedek is the holy spirit and that we are obligated to follow Melchizedek at this time in our history. So what Mrs. White had stated, that the, that there would be many winds of many different doctrines that would be blowing just as they were in the time of the Millerites, in this time of the end. It's our responsibility to rightly divide the word of truth by studying comparing and assessing what do we find to be that which is good which is right and which we should accept any other comments or thoughts at this time perhaps possibly uh, colin might be open to coming one morning and sharing what he thinks i i would think that that would be a great thing mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I'd like that. Perhaps I'll call him or Theodore. Or... How about you call him? 
Sure, I've, I've been meaning to for a while. Yeah, because, you know, he'd probably like to hear from you. Yeah, we spoke one, one evening, so, yeah, I'll call him again. Yeah, yeah, because he's right. welcome to come. Good. I mean, I've invited him other times. He's he's declined to come and present at our studies. Um, no, this may change things. Yeah, and, you know, maybe he could do a Sabbath, too, or something, like... Uh, Sabbath morning study if he or you know I don't know if he can make it at this time in the mornings unless he has some holidays but anyway you can talk to him about it sure or Friday or something or Sabbath or something yeah yeah figure it out yeah and there's not a rush or anything if you know he wants to think about it okay okay thanks Kelly okay Shall we then close this meeting with prayer? Loving Father in heaven, we thank you for the events of this past week. We thank you for our time of study and discussion. We ask now, Father, for your guidance and your direction. Help us to consider that which you are bringing to our minds. We ask, Father, that you direct us today, that you show us that which you would have us to do that will most Glorify your name and your character. May your will be done. Be with us each one today. I thank you for those that have attended this meeting and ask a blessing upon them each. Help us now to go forward and be prepared to give the message that you want given to this world. For this, Father, we thank you. In this, we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen.